to all the world. We rejoice at the coming of the Lord. Sing the song of the Lord. Let us lift up the name of the Lord. We celebrate the fulfillment of the promise. Sing a new song to the Lord. Let us receive the Lord's goodness. We sing a song of joy. Sing a new song to the Lord. Loving Creator, we give thanks for the birth of joy in our lives at Christmas. Send us forth as messengers of the good news, of the great joy for all the people we meet, and for all the people around the globe. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, now and forever. Amen. Dios omnipotente, para quien todos los corazones están abiertos, todos los deseos cuando conocidos son conocidos y ningún secreto sea encubierto, purifica los pensamientos de nuestros corazones por la inspiración de tu Santo Espíritu, para que perfectamente te amemos y dignamente proclamemos la grandeza de tu son, Santo Nombre, por Cristo nuestro Señor. Amen. I have a praise at number 87 in your name.
we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Isaiah, a hymn of thanksgiving and hope offered at the birth of a new king in Jerusalem. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son is given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good day is born, our Savior Christ, O Good day is born, our Savior Christ the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the world. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Today is born our Savior Christ the Lord. He claims glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. O praise the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all God. Today is born our Savior Christ the Lord. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is there. Today is for the Lord, our Savior, Christ the Lord. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes. When he comes to judge the earth. Today is for the Lord, our Savior, Christ the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. <clears throat> the two comings of Christ, first in his sacrificial ministry for all the people, and then in glory. 
For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own, who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able and let us turn in the hymn to number 89, It Came Upon Midnight Clear. Thank you. 
keeping watch over their flock by, by the night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, heaven and earth, and peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God, for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. that love you, and the strength of the wills that serve you, grant us so to know you that we may truly love you, so to love you that we may truly serve you, whose service is perfect freedom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Be seated. I need to tell you right up front. You need to pay close attention to this dialogue I'm going to share with you if you are to get the punchline at the end. Okay, are we all ready? <laughs> okay. One Christmas Eve, Pete and Jane were driving their Russian friend, Rudolph the Red, back to his house. The weather outside was frightful. 
Jane asked Pete, do you think that's sleep or rain out there? Pete said, it's rain, Jane. I think it's sleep, Pete, she said. Then their friend Rudolph chimed in. He said, it's definitely rain, Jane. No, I really think it's sleep, Rudolph, Pete, uh, Jane said. Pete said, don't argue with the expert, Jane. She said, what do you mean, Pete? And Pete replied, Rudolph the Red knows rain, dear. <laughs> 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 Got it? <laughs> My most memorable Christmas gift as a child was a toy called Mr. Machine. I was about eight years old when I tore open the wrappings to find Mr. Machine staring back at me from his packaging. Mr. Machine was a clear plastic robot-like mechanical man of this size, wearing a red top hat with a giant key in his back. And when he wound up the key, he would walk, swinging his arms and repeatedly ringing a bell that is mounted on his front. It contained 44 wheels and gears of all sizes and all colors that could all be seen moving through that clear plastic as it walked. And here's the best part. Mr. Machine was made to be taken apart and put back together again. All those 44 wheels and gears could be removed from the clear plastic body and one by one be put back together again. To me, that was the best part of Mr. Machine. To my dad, that was the worst part <laughs> of Mr. Machine. To be honest, I don't know if I ever got all of those wheels and gears back into Mr. Machine in the proper order. I have the distinct memory of always having parts left over, but I'm sure many of you are familiar with that. <laughs> Nonetheless, I just loved that Mr. Machine. Now, of course, as a child, I learned all the Bible story, stories and I knew what Christmas was about. I knew it was about the birth of Jesus, the Son of God, born in a stable, laid in a manger, revealed to the shepherds. Our home, like probably your homes, had a Christmas crash that we carefully assembled and displayed every year at Christmas, similar to what we have in front of the altar. But like every kid, I loved when Santa came and left me and my siblings gifts under the tree, like Mr. Machine. But somewhere along the way, as I grew up, I started to realize that it was just as much fun to give gifts as it was to receive them. Looking for that special something for that special someone. Waiting for that look on their face as they opened the unexpected gift. Hoping, of course, that they would love and cherish the gift, even if it was just a new tie for dad or cheap perfume for mom. Then you start to realize that the gifts themselves are really only symbolic. They are expressions of the relationship that exists between the giver and the receiver. Giving a gift or receiving a gift was really all about the love, the care, the importance of one person for another, whether it be spouse or children or parents or friends or partner. Then at some point for me it came full circle. And I realized that all of those Christmas stories I learned as a kid were really about Jesus being the gift. The gift of God for a people that he loves so much. And that all the details of the stories had special meaning in the, in the bigger, bigger picture of God's plan. 
Now, I have to be honest. I often am a little bit leery when I hear some preachers talking about God's plan, because too often it seems to me they're talking about the preacher's plan, not God's plan. But I do believe in the plan of God. I do believe God has always had a purpose both in the act of creation and in the ongoing act of loving what he created. I believe it's a plan that God not only put into place, but continually reveals time and time again. And here's what I believe the plan of God to be. To make himself findable and make himself touchable. As I read the Bible stories from Genesis to Revelation, I see a God who works very, very hard at being present to us. Who tried time and time again to reveal the reality of his heart to us. Through prophets and messengers, through women and men, throughout history and experience, our God had one overwhelming desire to convince us of his great love for us. And then as St. Paul says in his letter to the Galatians, in the fullness of time, God sent his only son, born of a woman, to fulfill his law, to open for us the way of freedom and, and peace. The ultimate expression of God's desire to be one with us, by being one of us, is found in the first chapter of John's Gospel, where he says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. This, to me, is God being findable and God being touchable. All the symbols of the Christmas story, the stable, the manger, the shepherds, tell us where to find God in the simple story of our own lives. The son wasn't born in a palace surrounded by courtiers. He didn't sleep on precious silk sheets with his head on soft pillows. He didn't have servants to feed him or dress him. He wasn't found among the elite who veiled themselves from the harsh realities of life. He wasn't found among the rich who so often turned up their noses at the thought of common folk or turned a blind eye to the plight of the poor. God has never desired to be a part or aloof or separated from us, the object of his affection. And so through the Son among us, we discover a God who desires to be found and yearns to be touched. Through the experience of the little child born in a stable, laid in a manger, revealed to the poor shepherds, God is accessible and huggable and lovable. And he continually assures us there is not one experience in life when he is not beside us. I have a favorite Christmas story that I'm going to share with you. I tell this Christmas story every year. If I was here as rector for 20 years, you would hear it 20 times. I don't think you'd get sick of it, but I do plan sometimes for people not remembering it from year to year, as if it's new all over again. To me, this story wraps up this experience of a findable, touchable God that I've been talking about. It goes like this. A little boy wanting to meet God. He knew it was a long trip to where God lived, so he packed a bag with some Snickers bars and some cans of Coke, and he started off on his journey. He'd gone maybe half a mile or so when he met an old lady. She was sitting in the park, just staring at the pigeons. The boy sat down next to her, and he opened his bag. And he was just about to take a drink from one of his cans of Coke when he noticed that the elderly woman looked hungry. So he offered her some of his Snickers bars. 
And she gratefully accepted. And she smiled at him. And her smile lit up her whole face. It was so lovely that the boy wanted to see it again, so he offered her a drink of Coke. And once again, she smiled at him. And the boy was delighted, and they sat there all afternoon eating Snickers, drinking Coke, and smiling. But they never said a word to each other. As it grew dark, the boy realized how tired he was, and he got up to leave for home. But before he went more than a few steps, he turned around and he ran back to the old woman and he gave her a huge hug. And she gave him the biggest smile ever. Now when the boy opened the door to his house a short time later, his mother was surprised at that look of joy on his face. She said to him, what did you do today that made you so happy? And he said, I had lunch with God. And before his mother could respond, he added, you know what? She's got the most beautiful smile I've ever seen. Meanwhile, the old woman, also radiant with joy, returned to her home. And her son was stunned by the look of peace on her face. And he said, Mother, what did you do today that made you so happy? And she said, I ate Snickers bars in the park with God. And before he could say anything more, she said, you know, he's much younger than I expected. <laughs> the true gift, gift of Christmas is about the gift of God's presence in our personal lives, the findable, touchable God, and how we share that gift with the people that we meet every day. Amen. Stand as you are able, as together we say the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and of all that we have seen and known since we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God from the Father, God from God, and light from light, true God from true God. God of one being, of the one being of the Father, the true and the whole creation, for us and for our salvation, in the eternal life. Father, the power of the Holy Spirit, the beginning of our garments for a gentle man, and the same way, for our sake and the truth of God and the conscious of God, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. Church with humility and faith that we might triumph over the 
power of his evil. Glorious Lord, grant us your peace. Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. You abhor neither the symbol nor the lowly. Shine your light on all the world that the nations may look upon your truth and find their salvation. Glorious Lord, grant us your peace. Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. May all of creation burst forth in song of your praise. May all the works of your hand glorify you. Glorious Lord, grant us your peace. Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. Summon the people of the city to yourself. May all of the distractions and partings of our lives fade away in the joy of your presence. Glorious Lord, grant us your peace. Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. You love us so deeply. Grant your giving grace to sinners, to the poor, to those in need of love. Open your arms to the sick and the lonely. We remember all of those on our prayer list, Barbara, George, Janet, Kim, Laurel, Carol, Ronwin, Wynn, Sheldon, Gail, Casey, the people of St. Andrews in Casablanca, and for any personal intentions you may wish to add. Glorious Lord, grant us your peace. Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. All glory be given to you. You bless our earthly bodies with your birth, and you promise to rise us to new life by your death and resurrection. Glorious Lord, grant our just peace. O Lord our God, may the light and hope of this night and of your Son's incarnation reassure our hearts that you are among us, that you hear our prayer, and that you will be all with us always, even to the end of the age. In the name of Jesus Christ, born in Bethlehem, we pray. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, by our heart and by our heart and by our heart and by our and by our heart 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 Dios omnipotente, tenga misericordia de ustedes, perdone todos sus pecados por Jesucristo nuestro Señor, les fortalezca en toda bondad y por el poder del Espíritu Santo, les conserve en la vida eterna. Amén. La paz del Señor sea siempre con ustedes. Let us share the Lord's peace with each other.
Jesus, come with thee, O Lord, and thy will have to be with thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and bringing voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Praise of your name. 
Remember, Lord, your one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with Joseph and Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, our honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, we must keep the feast. Alleluia! The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 
We don't have any announcements, but I do want to wish you a very, very happy, loving, caring, and peaceful Christmas. Tomorrow may be a great day to spend the, with the people that you love. No arguing, no fighting, no, no drama. Just a wonderful, peaceful day. That's way it's all our families, isn't it? So have a very blessed Christmas. Thank you. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season. Scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the good news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make your heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, join heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. Y la bendición de Dios Todopoderoso, Padre, Hijo y Espíritu Santo, sea con ustedes y permanezca con ustedes para siempre. Amen. Let's stand and sing our final hymn, number 99, Go Tell It On <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.